Hey guys, welcome to our channel. If you are new here, I am Katie, and usually we're doing some sort of a project or uh, working on our house or some type of renovation type thing. Um, but today we're gonna do a different kind of video. Have you ever wondered just how user-friendly a pour over coffee maker is? I have. And so I ordered one and I wanted to do a test right here and a review for you guys to see the Cavaco pour over coffee maker as well as the Bodum 27 ounce plug-in electric kettle. So lately I've been wanting to decorate my house and make it look all pretty and one of the next things I want to do is make my cute little coffee bar look like a cute little coffee bar. And part of that was selling my Ninja coffee maker. And I know those of you who knew how much I loved it are gonna be surprised. But I wanted to try something different that was prettier and one thing that I really saw a lot of was the pour over coffee and then like the gooseneck little electric kettles. And I figured, you know what? Let's just sell my Ninja and buy a new coffee pot thing and if I don't like it, I could sell that and then rebuy a Ninja because that's how we roll over here. But part of buying new stuff for us is selling your stuff, using that money to buy new stuff. So I went through a month of making cowboy coffee. It wasn't really bad, it was just really inconsistent. Really inconsistent. Part of like my personality of loving to buy and sell things is you get to try out lots of different stuff because usually I'll sell something to buy something else. And then I figured, you know what, worst comes to worst, if I don't like this whole pour over coffee thing, I can sell it and then rebuy my Ninja coffee maker. But the reason I wanted to buy something different was because I really like things to look pretty when it's out on the counter. And the Ninja, it works awesome and I loved it, but it's really big and it's not aesthetically pleasing. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna watch a couple YouTube videos, figure out if this uh, pour over coffee thing is worth it, and I'm gonna give it a shot. I did a lot of research on what to order and which products I should go with, and I ended up getting the Kamako. I got this guy. I will definitely put the links to both of these things in the description box below. But I got the Supreme Coffee Brewer with a leather collar. Usually they have a wooden one, but I saw the leather one and was like, oh, it's so pretty. And since I'm gonna have it, this is my future coffee bar, I wanted it to be pretty. And so I ordered two things that I thought would be pretty. And now I'm just hoping that they'll be just as functional as they are pretty. So let's open these up. I got this, uh, let's see, I ordered a while ago, got it like within a week or so. And then I ordered the kettle a month and 10 days ago. So no, a month and 14 days ago I ordered this. I don't know why it took so long to get here. Not sure if they're made to order and they're just specialty, but I haven't opened it yet. I have a confession. I did crack the lid because I, I wasn't gonna open this. I was gonna wait and film it. I went like this just because I like, could not wait. Then I went like this. <gasps> oh, it's beautiful. And then I shut it back up. So I didn't even take this out. So I saved that for you guys. All right, let's open these up. Let's start with this bad boy. Here is the filter. I've heard a lot of people don't like the mesh filters and a lot of people do, so it just depends. Whoa. 
Wow. Okay, so this is the outside. It's thicker holes, bigger holes. But then when you look on the inside, check this out. Like it feels like plastic. I put my hand in there and I felt it and it's not plastic. It's just a really, really tight weave mesh. So then we've got that and then we've got this nice little rubber gasket that we can easily take off and wash underneath when things get yucky. Here's a cute little lid for those of you who don't drink a whole pot at one sitting. And here we go. Wow, oh, it's pretty. I like the size of it. Here's the leather cuff. How does that come off? Oh yeah, look at there. Very nice, very nice. It definitely feels like really good quality so far. And what's this guy do? Oh, okay, so this guy will go all the way in there if you're not careful. So I think you just, I don't know, gently set it on? Like really gently set it on? All right, here's the instructions. That's all that's in there. Little circle. Supreme Coffee Brewer Glass Carafe with Leather Collar. Genuine leather. Smells like leather. That's like one of my favorite smells ever, ever, ever when you smell leather. Measuring, warming, blooming, pouring. Discard the grounds. Finally, enjoy your coffee. Now, I have heard that this is a very peaceful, methodical method of drinking coffee. That's not why I got it. I merely got it because it's pretty. Is that kind of a lame reason to get a coffee pot? Because it's pretty? Me and Jared have had the functional talk a couple times. He's like, babe, just because a couch is beautiful does not mean it's functional. And I have to agree with him, and I'm slowly getting better. But since he's not the major coffee drinker, I am. I figured, why not? Just give it a try. Let's open the kettle. My box came slightly damaged, so hopefully that doesn't... Oh, let's just do this. Okay, let's not. Ooh, like this box was made for it. Perfection. How do we get this out? Oh, the inside box got torn too. Hang on here. Is this stressing you guys out? Do you just want to get in here and open it? <sighs> kind of like when a kid is opening a Christmas present, you're like, like itching to just rip the paper and they're just like picking at it like they can't get it. This is irritating. Okay, enough of that. You're kidding yourself. Here we go. Notice, damage in the box. But doesn't that happen when you ship stuff? I mean, Jared works for UPS, and I don't want to burst your bubble, but just because the box says this end up does not mean that that end will remain up throughout the entire shipping process. All right, here we go. We've got the Bodum Mill, I don't know how to say that, Gooseneck Water Kettle. From all of my experience and expertise on the pour over coffee, I've watched a few YouTube videos, so I'm basically a professional now. Uh, you need to use a gooseneck so that you can accurately pour around the coffee grounds. So, and it's just really pretty, really pretty. Let's see if it's as pretty as it is in the picture. We've got our owner's manual. That's ginormous. Why is it so big? Oh, okay. Let's see, we've got the lid. Cute little cork top there. Well, steam holes. Here is the, the base and the box. Not much to it. It's plastic. Like literally, that's all there is to it. It's just plastic. And then you got this cute little clipping base here. But I mean, if that's all it needs, that's all it needs. It had a ton of really great reviews. Ooh, it's pretty. It feels heavy uh, for what it is. So there's that bottom part. There's a little light on the front and a cute little spring-loaded deal here and a max fill line on the inside. This is one of the features that everyone was liking, that there was no plastic at all except for this little guy. And if you are following the instructions, your water will never touch that anyway, apparently. Another thing people were saying was to make sure you use the right water and not using tap water because then you could end up with a lot of calcium buildup on the inside, just like any other appliance, I suppose. So, should we try it out? I've got my water in there. Pop the 
lid on. Nice and tight seal, by the way. You just set it on, and then that's it. So apparently when this is hot enough, this little button will click up, and that's it. They had a lot of other fancier ones where you could press like jasmine tea or oolong or green or whatever to like adjust the temperature, but I am a simple person, so I like simple things and can't get much more simple than that, right? Other than like a boiling kettle on the stove, obviously. Okay, the most flexible part of coffee brewing and arguably the one that affects the taste the most for medium strength coffee you should measure about two level tablespoons per five ounces of coffee. Two level tablespoons per five ounces of coffee. Now in all the videos I watched, they were fancy baristas weighing out the beans and making sure the consistency was completely and 100% accurate. This is not that video. I wanted to see how user friendly this is. So we're just gonna go ahead and do it. I've got my beautiful Moose Munch coffee. It's so, so good. It's from Harry and David and it was a gift from Harry and David. Jared delivers there and the guy that he delivers to always sends home special treats and this is one of my favorites. Oh, so good. The only issue is that this is whole bean and I do not have a coffee grinder. So we're going to use my immersion blender. It's been maybe just about a minute and I can already hear it boiling. Oh, I wish you could smell that. That's not a good idea. I think that's good enough. Does that look, does that look right? Okay, so it was saying two scoops per every five ounces. This is scoop because I feel like that's what most scoops look like. Two, oh, two tablespoons, not two scoops. Two, t two level tablespoons per five ounces. This is one tablespoon. Oh, so it is scoop. The best grind for a drip coffee it would be a medium grind about the texture of sea salt. But how much coffee do I do? I'm assuming these are six cups. Cups? Okay, so if our pitcher has 27 ounces of water in it, 27 divided by five is 5.4. Uh, so does that mean we need like 11 tablespoons? Because it says two tablespoons per every five ounces, right? And if 5.4, that's basically 5.5, .5, five and a half. Maybe I should see how many ounces the pitcher holds first. I don't want to brew in perfectly good coffee grounds, so we're just gonna do it this way. I did take a cup of water and put it in here and it came like right at one and a half. So I don't know if these are accurate, so we're just gonna measure and just see how many ounces this can hold. It's 37 ounces. Cool, so, so I'm super, super bad at math. And if I did the math wrong, that'll explain everything. All right, put this in and we're gonna do the two level tablespoons per five ounces. 27 divided by five ounce servings is 5.4. Double 5.4 is basically 11. But we can do 10 just to be safe. That's a lot of coffee. One, oh. Nine, no, that's not right. Hang on a second, let me Google how much to put in here. Okay, so I guess it's saying one to 15. It's talking about grams. So basically they're saying for every one cup of water you put in, you need three tablespoons of coffee. So let's not make a full pot just in case. We're gonna put this back and we're gonna start over. Okay, so let's just say we're gonna make five cups. Does that go, five cups go in there? Let's just check and see how accurate this is. Okay, so I don't know what the deal is with these little markings, but they can't be trusted because just take this off so you can see. This is five cups. I used my liquid measuring cup, measured out five cups of hot water, and that's five cups. This says six, that says five, four, three, two, one. So I don't know, so I don't know what that's all about, but just so I know, that is five cups of water. Which means I would need 15 tablespoons of coffee grounds. Okay. 
Okay, so four literal cups of coffee falls just below the six mark. So let's make six, four cups of coffee. So that's my only complaint so far. I don't understand this. Okay, embarrassing little side note here. I am just sitting here editing the video and I'm looking over it, looking over it, and then I get to the part about the ounces, which still confuses me why it would be mismarked. And as I'm reading the instructions, I'm listening to myself, and it says two tablespoons for every five ounces. Two level tablespoons per five ounces. And then it occurred to me, I'm like, I wonder if the markings on the carafe are for every five ounces and not per every cup. But how much coffee do I do? I'm assuming these are six cups. Cups? Which, in my defense, you would think, you know, people usually order drinks by the cup. Unless it's a fancy coffee thing. Maybe fancy coffee goes by that, the five ounce mark or something. So, I got the carafe out, dumped all the coffee out of it, and then I weighed it, and sure enough, it's five ounces at every mark. So, <laughs> when it says a cup of coffee, Maybe it doesn't mean a literal cup of coffee. Maybe it means five ounces of coffee. So this whole time I have been making coffee, uh, it's been about a week, and I have been making coffee uh, two tablespoons per every eight ounce. If you do two tablespoons for every five ounces, it's gonna be really, really strong, like really strong, but there you go. Now, resuming the video. All right, with how much coffee that goes through, you might see this. On Facebook Marketplace in a couple days. Okay. All right. So the next thing is we gotta let the coffee bloom. Apparently, that's what it's called. My light turned off. This took no time to heat up at all. Pour it around the edge first. Zigzag motion. Let it saturate and bloom for a second. Oh, it smells good. It smells like it's working. You know what I'm kind of wondering. I would never make a full pot of coffee. Maybe that's why I feel like that's a lot of coffee grounds. Because when I make a, cup, a cup of coffee, I do. I put about two scoops in for when I make a cup. So maybe that's not half bad. Tell me how you guys like your coffee. If you're gonna make, if you're gonna make like, say, 16 ounces, how much do you usually put in? Or do you guys make a pot? What do you guys do for your coffee to water ratio? Uh, I think I heard. I might have to look at Google again to see if you're supposed to go all the way around or just at the top. Me, basically, I don't want to time anything. I just want my coffee in the morning, so we're just going to go like this. We're just going to have fun watching it go down. It's nice and frothy on the top. That's fun. It smells amazing. So since we're making a fancy coffee anyway, I'm gonna make my favorite salted cream top. Some Himalayan pink salt. Tiny bit of my sweetener. I like to use Pure, P-Y-U-R-E. It's in a purple bag and I really like it a lot. And then we're just gonna froth it up just a little bit. a tablespoon of my pure sweetener in there. A little bit more salt in the actual coffee. So it's definitely a lot longer process than pressing the button and walking away. But I will say you don't have to sit here and babysit it. Like you can just pour water in and walk away. Come back, pour more water in and walk away. Okay, so if you get the two of these as a pair, Filling this kettle to max line will pull it right about, probably just a hair under the five cup mark. But since I already put the grounds in for four cups, I'm gonna boil a little bit more water and bring it up to that just below the six cup line. It might be a little bit of trial and error before I figure out the perfect cup of coffee. All right, it's done. So I'm gonna take the filter out. Maybe that's what this little rubber thing's for so you don't burn your hand. Take the filter out. Smells good. All right, so let's see what all this hype is all about. Okay, so as far as coffee, there's two things I do not like. I don't like watery coffee 
and I do not like burnt coffee. And this does not give me that burnt flavor at all. I love strong coffee and this is very strong. Not too strong. It's like a good strong. I like it a lot. Ooh, I like it a lot. Overall, I am thrilled. I love how fast this boils. I love the shape of it, the look of it. I love the shape and look of this. haven't treated yourself yet to heavy whipping cream with salt on top of your coffee, you need to do it. Well that was a fun video to make. It was different and I was already going to buy these anyway so I figured why not make a video for you guys. It is in no way sponsored by Amazon or affiliates whatsoever. Um, but I will put the links in the description box below if you decide to buy this lovely little pair. If you guys already use one of these, and you have tips and pointers, let me know. I definitely don't wanna be of this barista scale. Uh, I just wanna see if an average Joe can use it simply, and honestly, you can. And I think just by pouring water in over the top, walking away, doing something, pouring a little bit more water, walking away, doing something, it tastes great to me. It tastes really good. I'm not a coffee connoisseur, but uh, I know yucky coffee, and this is not yucky coffee. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for joining us today on our channel. And if you're liking what you're seeing, make sure you click that subscribe button as well as that little notification bell so that you can be notified when we post new videos and that way you won't miss anything.